Currently, the U.S. government is $17 trillion in debt, and this is largely in part that we're spending money we don't have on things that we don't necessarily need. For example, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Programs, which is SNAP. It's basically the newer version of food stamps. We are proposing that the government should cut funding to SNAP. Firstly, providing this government funding is ineffective because it supports people who don't absolutely need it and it doesn't support people, it doesn't support everyone who's living in poverty. This is stated by the recent census, which reports that there are 46.5 million Americans that live in poverty right now. However, the U.S. Department of Agriculture says that there are 47 million people on food stamps and are on SNAP. And 83% of those users live at or below the poverty line. This means that there are 17% of SNAP users, which is around 8 million, that live above the poverty line. And that also means that while those people are getting aid, there are 7.5 million people who live at or below poverty who aren't getting that necessary aid. So if you're going to make the moral argument that the government is obligated to help people who need it, not everyone is getting helped by this. Also, the system doesn't benefit everyone. Not everyone can qualify for it. For example, non -legal, or legal non-citizens make up 4% of people benefiting from SNAP. However, they make up almost 20% of the people living in poverty in the United States. Also, some people are eligible through categorical eligibility, which is a method used by most states that states that if you qualify for certain aspects of welfare, you qualify for all of it. And you qualify for food stamps. Secondly, it's really hard to regulate. There are a lot of people who sell the SNAP or EBT cards and in exchange for cash or other things. Um, Americans spend $80 billion each year financing food stamps and the country just it's almost impossible to know where all of it's going because stores aren't obligated to explain who's buying what with EBT cards. As a result, fraud is hard to track and the efficiency of the massive program is impossible to evaluate. And that's by the Washington Times. Um, also by the New York Times, it reports that more than three, $3 billion is lost to trafficking, fraud, and overpayments. That's people not including the right amount of how much they make when they apply. Thirdly, it's really expensive to keep the program going. As I mentioned before, the program costs taxpayers $80 billion a year. 4% um, of taxes go to this program, which is twice as much as what goes to education. Elementary, secondary, and vocational education only get 1.73% of tax dollars. It's almost eight times as much as what goes to child care, foster care, adoption, and it's twice as much as what goes to housing assistance. That's according to the White House government. Fourthly, it doesn't even it doesn't even solve the issue of poverty or hunger. It just kind of puts a band-aid over it. Um, so, and it also causes dependency. So it, it's shown that in 1969, which is when they started keeping records of who was on this, there were 2.8 million people like eating from it. Currently, there's 47.6 million people. So if it didn't cause dependency, then we would see the numbers be steady and stay the same instead of increasing as drastically as it does. There are better alternatives to SNAP, such as WIC, which is funding for women, infants, and children, and national school lunch programs. Together, both of those are less than what it costs to keep funding SNAP and they are more beneficial in the future. WIC helps 8.7 million people each year. 
4.3 million of these people are children, and more people are eligible for it too. Instead of being within 130% of the poverty level, you can qualify if you're within 185%. Also, it's not, it's a federal grant program, so taxpayers, money is specifically allocated for it, so there's no overpayment there. The National School Lunch Program helps every child, um, 30.5 million children annually. It's, if a child's family income is less than 130% of the poverty level, it's free lunch, reduced lunch for 185%, and subsidized for everyone. So, WIC and the National School Lunch Programs are a lot better alternatives than the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which is, it, it, it basically provides government handout to people who take advantage of the system. Nope. Oh yeah, that's, that one's okay.